Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and I'd like to make a video about talking you through my recent, depending on when you see this, my last, as of this recording, bodybuilding transformations. And that transformation, it was after seven months of off-season weight gain, and that off-season program has been described already, that's, so that would be episode one, so this is episode two. Well, what the hell am I talking about? Check this out. So in December of 2020, I did the NPC local show called the Diamond Classic. I weighed in at 225.2 pounds, which is uh, just in the uh, heavyweight category. And I had a DEXA that week at 6.9% body fat. And I looked okay. I wasn't very dry. Didn't do the water stuff well enough. So I was carrying quite a bit of excess water. And if I was dry, I would have weighed substantially less. Right? Then just so after seven months of off-season, I did in 2021, up through December, I did a prep for the Masters USAs, which I did, and I took second place in the Supers, which was really cool. I weighed in at 225.6. I had a DEXA that week at 5.8% body fat, and I looked way, way drier, much better. So I probably put on about 10 pounds of muscle between those two shows. And most of it was in that seven months of off-season, right after December 2020, all the way to about, oh, August, or uh, July, August of um, 2021. But some of the muscle when cool transformation was achieved in the show prep diet itself. So let's take a look at the diet and training of what I did to get in shape for that show. So it was a 17-week hypocaloric on average diet, and the calorie average for the diet was about 3,000 calories per day. And in the macro average, and I'll show you a typical day that's going to look a little bit different than this, the macro average was 275 grams of protein per day, 360 grams of carbs per day, and about 50 grams of fats per day. I did just under 12,000 steps walking on average every day, and I did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu two to four times per week. Of course, what about the weight training? On top of that, there's my training. You can see it right here. You can pause it and take a look. But basically, it's legs, back, on Tuesday, and then Tuesday is biceps, delts, and forearms, PM. Wednesday is chest and triceps, just in the AM. Thursday is another leg session. And then in the PM, more shoulders and biceps and forearms because those muscles recover pretty fast. Friday is back again. So every muscle is more or less trained twice a week. Unless you are delts and biceps and forearms, then you are trained three times a week because on that Saturday, after chest and triceps for the second time a week, it's the third time a week for delts, biceps, and forearms. So very straightforward training. And if you want to know more about two-a-day training, Revive Stronger, Steve Hall has an interview with myself, Charlie and Jared, talking about two-a-days on his channel. So it's really good stuff. But in any case, that was my training. Typical meal plan. A lot of folks are curious about this. So here's typical meal plan. You can pause it any time to look at it in detail. But basically, I would wake up at around 8 in the morning, and I would have a casein shake or casein pudding, which was basically almost entirely protein. The macros are listed below everything. And then I would work, like do my uh, RP work to, you know, earn a living, etc. Then at roughly 11 o'clock in the morning, I would train and I would just have water with like a Mio squirt calorie-free shake in it. I didn't have any sort of uh, calories on top of that. And then at 1 p.m., after training typically two hours later uh, or two hours after I began training, I would finish it and have my first meal and then go to work. My first whole food meal would be usually trifecta chicken breast. White rice, broccoli slaw, salt, pepper, some combination, which was about 50 grams of protein, 170 grams of carbs, plenty of rice, and about six grams of fat. And that similar meal would be repeated with a few less carbohydrates at 5 p.m. when I would re-up on food and then continue to work. As you can tell, I work most of the day. And then at about 8 p.m., I retire from work for the day. And then I have another meal, this time trifecta hamburger, a bit more fat, uh, fewer carbs than the first meal, same as the second meal, a second whole food meal. And then I would just do watch TV and relax with my wife, Crystal, which is really fun. And then at 11 p.m., close to the end of the finish TV at about 10, do all the night things to get ready for bedtime. And then at 11, just before I go to bed, I would have egg white wraps with uh, casein pudding in them. It's not a very good taste, but I was starving to death at this point. And they have mostly protein, very little carbs and fats. So that's a typical meal plan. Um, and the daily totals for that, kind of day, which was similar to the other days, 280 grams of protein, 433 grams of carbs. You think, wait a minute, you said 360 grams of carbs, but hold on, it's 28 fats, right? So it's even lower than 3,000 calories. That was 2,816 calories. So I would do those kinds of days if I wanted to push the fat loss a little bit further. Pushing fat loss further, 
sometimes tends to fatigue you. It causes potentially a lot of diet fatigue. And then if the diet fatigue was like rather extreme, what I would do is take a few days of roughly 3,500 calories per day uh, for a few days straight until the diet fatigue reduced and it worked really well. My maintenance was, oh, anywhere between 3,750 to 4,000. So this was pretty close to maintenance, not quite there, but uh, calories were all similar bodybuilding food. So I get to eat a lot, my hunger abated, and I mostly pulled these days off, especially towards the end of the diet, when I would be at a very, very high level of diet fatigue. And the way I cataloged that was if I had two nights in a row of waking up so hungry in the middle of the night that I can't go back to sleep, I'd say, okay, it's time to pull back. Um, and it didn't happen a ton of times, but it happened enough times to where I had to use this strategy, right? Steps. How do I get my steps? So a common question is, okay, you said 12K steps, but how do you get them? A lot of it is walking around the gym between sets. A lot of times when I'm on a fat loss phase, I don't sit around much between sets. It's not like I'm doing cardio, but I'm just like walking around on my phone, walking around looking at stuff. And the steps add up because the pedometer measures everything. When I would go shopping every few days, I'd park the car really far, walk through the whole parking lot, walk around the store a little bit extra. That ends up tons and tons of steps. And if I'm listening to podcasts or um, if I'm on a business call for work in the house, then generally I'm walking around while doing it. If you just, if you could be walking or could not be walking and you choose to walk by default, you just burn a crap ton of calories throughout the whole day and get your all your steps that you need. So that was a very, very straightforward way. I'm not going to say easy, but um, certainly easier than doing tons of formal cardio. And that worked to get me pretty damn shredded. But of course, there are other things in the mix. In an alternate universe, of course, someone who is not me would do something like what you see right here on your screen. And I'm drug-free, 100% lifetime drug-free, and I would never do anything like that. So clearly this is not something I did, but I want you guys to see it because it is a representation of what uh, may have actually occurred in an alternate universe. I can't make that any more clear, so I'll just shut the fuck up. Anyway, that was how I did my entire diet, and that got me ultra-fucking-lean striatic glutes, the whole thing. But it's not enough because to present well on a bodybuilding stage, you have to pull off the peak properly. Next video that we'll have next week for you guys is how I did my peak week. So I'll see you then.